a long time. But we know that biological age will be accelerated by being obese, by not exercising, and just living the lifestyle that, that we know from epidemiology is not the perfect one. At least half of America is overweight or obese. If you include certain cutoffs, some people estimate that it's over 75%. And this drives the aging process. Um, and one of the side effects, of course, is obesity. But obesity may not be the main driver, actually. That's a, a symptom of the problem that, that I want to talk to you about. So there are lots of things that go wrong in the aged body. And by aged, I'm not just talking about birthday candles. I'm talking about actual biological age. Now, biological age can be measured in a variety of ways. Um, let's just talk about that for a minute. We can measure the DNA methylation status of our cells, the so-called Horvath DNA methylation clock. Uh, we can measure that pretty easily in a blood test or a swab from the cheek these days, get a very accurate uh, estimation of how old someone is biologically. Uh, but there are other things that change in a predictable way. Um, and unlike 10 years ago, where we thought we'd never have biomarkers, now we have quite a few. You can look at changes in immune cell diversity, uh, such as T cells. You can build a very good immune clock. Uh, you can look at the levels of NAD in the body, which decline with time. Uh, one of the things that we, Gordon Lauk and I, Professor Gordon Lauk and I wrote about is a paper actually also in the journal aging is that uh, the, the immune system changes in part because sugars change that are attached to proteins. This is the process of glycation. And Gordon's lab has done an amazing job. They've found that there's a glycan clock and what he calls it is the glycan age of a person. And why is that important? Because as we get older, the type of sugars that are attached to proteins in the body, whether it's antibody and even the ACE2 uh, so-called receptor on the surface of endothelial cells, these are all changed as we get older in terms of their glycation. And we also have epigenetic changes that control how cells behave. And we know that during aging, epigenetic changes occur. And we think that cells lose their identity. And that's true for immune cells. It's true for the lining of the blood vessels, the endothelial cells. And, that, and then finally, there's the process of immunosenescence. Now, that there's two types of immunosenescence. I don't want to get confused, people confused here. Immunosenescence typically refers to just the aging of the overall immune system. That means that there's less variety of T cells, there's less ability to mount an immune, re immune response and clear viruses. But there's also cellular immunosenescence, what you call immuno, uh, but there's also cellular senescence which is a different story, which is about cells checking out of the cell cycle and becoming more like zombie cells. And you can stay in those for beta-galactosidase or P16. And this is another type of cellular senescence. There's some overlap between immunosenescence and cellular senescence, but it's important to realize they're not the same thing.